Hey, hey. That's better. Oh, no, that fine. <laughs> nice. I, I made two scenes. Right. But I didn't put a shortcut to the set, the, the new scene. Ah, uh, I see. You know, I see. The ten, ten minute, uh, the ten minute rush job I did there. I, I, okay. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah. Anyway. You you want to start? Yeah. Hello, people. Welcome to yet another episode. Of Who's that anime? Uh, and this week we're talking about Pokemon, the movie, Secrets of the Jungle. We are so rude. So uh, rude. That's <laughs> Yeah, we are Zarud. Uh, oh, it's, it's pretty much my, my whole oh, takeaway from the entire movie. We are Zarud. All oh, right. Not, not so rude. No, 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 not that. Um, <laughs> yet. So, no, not yet. Uh, oh. So this week, this week is special because we have a Pokemon expert, Robbie, with us. Yes. Yeah. I, I, am, a, I am a sucker for anything Pokemon. You know this about me. Yeah. Apart from apart from the movies <laughs> uh for for lots of reasons some of them glaringly obvious but um yeah it's actually really nice to be here and it was it was nice to have a bit of i would have watched the film anyway it was nice to have a bit of purpose in in watching it and uh yeah i actually quite enjoyed watching it with a slightly more um analytical head on you know yeah, I, th I think it's it's nice to be able to tell yourself you haven't wasted nearly two hours because there was a reason you were watching this. Yeah, well, that that is exactly right. That is exactly right. Yes, Pokemon the movie definitely not Tarzan. <laughs> yes, uh, it's not. Yeah. It's not Tarzan. Carbon copy. De definitely not Tarzan or Jungle Boy the movie. Yeah, no, missing Phil Collins. That's the problem. <laughs> Fire soundtrack from Disney's Tarzan is what we really needed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how many movies have there been of Pokemon, by the way? That's about uh, 746. No, there's been as the many as there are part. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry. One, one, there's one feature film per, per Pokemon. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, did you say 23? Uh, there's been 23, yeah. That's yeah, not I think real. Been, let me do Surely? a quick. I've got my. I've got the, Hold on. I've got my. Uh, oh, fuck, check. I've had in front of you. Yeah. I'm fairly certain that it's the the twenty third Pokemon film. Um, <laughs> which is uh, which if if that is not quantity over quant uh, quality, then I don't know what is. Uh, twenty three, yeah, twenty three theatrical Pokemon movies. Mm. They watched and, that first. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, what? When was the last time either of you watched a Pokemon film? There, uh, not that long ago, surprisingly. That was, that the was the last first. time you watched it was that first one. <laughs> that was your first. Oh, I, I never followed the series. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really. grow up with it as much as you guys. It was just the great thing about the Pokemon anime is that um, not even the creators of the series follow the series. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's an absolute shambles but um i i watched the before this one the last pokemon film that i watched was the remake of the original you know they Is they did the, the, the new yes yeah, yeah i've watched quite, that one I, I, I quite enjoyed that but even the first film even going all the way back because you know with stuff like this you can you know you can get drawn to the whole nostalgia factor and think of the first, the original Pokemon film as this really great, <laughs> really great movie. Like, it's totally not. It, it's like an hour and 45 and about an hour of that is filler, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, but it does feed into that nostalgia, which makes it really appealing. So the new ones, I do find the new ones like quite challenging in, in a few different ways. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I think that's the last one. The last one I watched, or that is is that there's another one called is it Mewtwo Strikes Back? Is that another one? Yes. Yeah. I feel like I've seen that one. That the... Mewtwo Strikes yeah, Back. I, is that is that the name of the Yeah, so the, the so the original film was Pokemon was Pokemon the movie Mewtwo Strikes Back. 
and then they brought oh. out the remake, which is Mutant Strikes oh. Back Evolution. Oh, okay. Uh, it's the so same that's movie. the one from 2019. Yeah, yeah. I like the uh, their their uh, 3D representation of Dragonite as a mailman in that movie. Uh, I really enjoyed. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. A mailman Dragonite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like uh, the delivery guy, just okay. uh, you know, rapidly moving and knocking shit over. Uh, is the <laughs> yeah, and they brought out uh, they brought out a Pokemon card of that mailman Dragonite uh, as oh. well, which I actually have. It's it's pretty cool. It's a nice card. I uh, yeah. recently in my Pokemon Pokemon card investment have picked up the uh, is it the Pokemon Celebration Trainer Elite Box? Yes, yes. I've now I have a total a total of seven Elite Trainer boxes sitting unopened. Nice. That Celebrations one is a good one to get hold of because that's been selling out in a lot of places. Yeah, it's uh, mm. it's gonna gonna be worth a lot one day. That's gonna be extra. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. So, one, I have watched one other Pokemon movie, but uh, that would be po- Pikachu, Detective Pikachu. Yeah, is that classified as a Pokemon movie? Well. Like I don't class it as a. I mean, it, it is a Pokemon movie, but I don't class it as a Pokemon movie. As in, it's not one of the twenty-three, like animated, Pokemon films that are based off of the anime. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's good, so it does have that unique <laughs> selling <Yeah>. point. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> you went to watch that in the cinema, right? Yes, yeah, and I've watched it a couple yeah. of times again since then. I really, I, I do genuinely think that's a great film. That's the kind of film that a Pokemon fan, you know, someone who's been into it for the amount of time that I have, that was a really rewarding cinema experience, you know, going and yeah. seeing that and the way that the way that they did it and the, the actors involved. That was, yeah, that was a really enjoyable movie. Um, yeah, I liked uh, the, the Lickitung scene in the train was particularly funny. <laughs> Yeah. It's like this random like a tongue that's just like licking things for no good reason. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, Pokemon the movie, Secrets of the Jungle. Mm-hmm. Where where do we even begin with this? Superman. Yeah, like it's like Superman. It's Moses. Not Moses. Who was the one in the basket? Uh, what the Moses jacket uh, basket? Yeah, was, uh, yeah, Moses. But Moses was in the basket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that one. <laughs> I think. Uh, um, or, or was it Pharaoh's son? He was going to get executed. Get, something like. We get a pretty fantastic musical number from the Zarud. Uh, At the start. By yeah. Anyway. I, uh... <laughs> this... There's one particular Zarud that's kind of just going ham on what might be bongos, <laughs> and it just uh, it, like really makes me laugh in a way that it's just like this is what is happening. It's like it's like yeah, stop your feet, something jungle, yeah, Zarud. Like okay, we are the jungle. Yeah. Also, these are words. Some of these are words, Zarud. How do you know these? <laughs> and then they have a big... oh right that, that that's literally the first. <laughs> I don't want to be too. I told myself before we started recording, I didn't want to be too negative about this, right? <laughs> but, but after that song is almost exactly where my enjoyment of the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> it peaked just, about ten seconds in. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was the moment that the moment that we established that these Zerud were going to be speaking English was the moment that I just. They've done it in in previous Pokemon films, and it weirded me out then just as much as it did this time around. <laughs> I I don't I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy them speaking English. I don't know what that's about. I understand that <laughs> it's a logistical nightmare to create a one hour forty minute movie based on creatures that you're not going to have speak English because <laughs> it's just, like, how do you portray anything? You can't insert Ash and Pikachu. It's like, what's that Pikachu? It's this. 
It's like, oh yeah, <laughs> like one of the kids has fallen down the well. Okay, like thanks, Zarud. Yeah, What's exactly. What's that? What was that, Lassie? <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, uh, dear! It, it just—it's so weird. And then, like I don't know, uh, the the cape to Sarud Dada, as we'll come to know him, uh, yeah. or takes Kate a Ape, I like to call him. <laughs> Do you, I've, I've added his little picture to our video, mm -hmm. uh, which I was quite happy about. I tried to add a Coco as well, but it was like, I, do you know, it really annoyed me, and this is going to make me sound so pedantic, but I work with artists every day now, and I am no, by no means saying this is a work of art, but if you look at the uh, Zarud's feet, you will notice there are subtle shadings where the shadows would be in the PNG. Uh, <laughs> I, the only one I could find of Coco, there were no shades under his feet. So it really right. bothered me that one of them had shadows and one of them didn't. And I do not have the artistic skills to make that different. <laughs> so I cut him out. He's gone. Uh, yeah, then uh, Dada finds uh, uh, the, the baby in the uh, in the river, in the in what would looks like a metal pod, like one of those things you put cash in for your job and put up the tube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the baby was a little bit terrifying. And again, definitely not, definitely not Tarzan. Uh, no, not, just not coin, a... just coincidentally similar. Um, Did... It's got superpowers at the start. What? Did you notice know yeah. it like teleported on top of the so Dada's head? Because he was walking away at the start, what? right? Because the baby was like at one end of the log, right? And then he looked at the kid and the. Uh, I went, ah, it's just a kid, I'll leave it alone type thing. And it starts walking away. And he's a kid like 10 yards or so away from the kid. And then suddenly the kid's on top of his head. Yeah, but in this universe, remember, Pokemon are, are communicating in perfect English. So <laughs> I think babies might be able to teleport as well. It might just be part yeah. of the <laughs> might be the quirk of that universe. crossover we've all been waiting for. Well, uh, you know, I mean... Certainly, uh, I mean, it could just be Superman. It could just be like a baby from Kryptonite. Huh. <laughs> yeah, which is essentially the Incredibles. So we're we're both right. Uh, <laughs> and then then we get uh, if I remember correctly, some sort of song montage. Of them. yeah, there's a montage. This this could also be Pokemon montage version because there was a montage and then there was a break of about. The, so they had a montage to uh, to sort of speed up the process of the baby becoming the Coco that we see in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Did they ever? Did they ever? I can't remember if they ever mentioned Coco's age, but like t ten or eleven, something like that. Sure. What age is what age Probably. is Ash? Ash is ten. Is it ten? Okay, so ten. Let's say Ted. Yeah. I mean, isn't it normal to just send your ten year old out to deal with shit? <laughs> yeah. In this world, yes. And then but they had they have that montage and then it's like I'm sure there's only a twenty minute gap where they then bring in the next montage, which is about Coco's relationship with Ash or something. You know? It's montage crazy. Uh it made me think of uh, it. It gave me heavy mannequin vibes. That it, the eighties rom com, uh, <laughs> just with the amount of montages. Uh, uh, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, I suppose at the start it was the uh, length of the montages that was more abhorrent. Yeah, was yeah. it? Because you get the baby and he goes, all right, I'm going to keep the baby, take it back to the tribe. He gets kicked out of the tribe because he's not allowed to bring anything into yes. the tribe. Uh, yeah. And then they have like a montage of him growing up, looking for the parents. That's true. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's actually relatively important is that he it seems, <laughs> despite being a parent, he's like, if only there was a way I could give this kid back. Like, um, yeah. <laughs> I really want to, I want to protect this kid, but. More than anything else, I I want this kid to not be around. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Uh, I love this kid, but my god, I'm tired. <laughs> that, was, uh, <laughs> that was like the start, and he, he kind of grew up because he went. He finds like the secret lab, and he 
goes yes. and watches some fireworks with the kid. Yep. And then the kid finally grows up, and then he's eventually to able to talk to Pokemon. Apparently, he can actually understand Pokemon. But, oh yeah, cause yeah. Because no one forest, else, the yeah. jungle. Well, yeah, but no one else can understand that. In yeah, the I feel like that was sort of, oh. glo- sort of glossed over. Yeah. Wait. So, oh wait. Have I just completely missed this? Then he can speak to all the other Pokemon, uh-huh. but all of the Zaru can't. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think that's right. Well, at least certainly he can, and Dada Zarud cannot. Yeah. What's going on with this? Yeah, that makes no sense. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Uh... No wonder I lost over that in my head. And then the Zoo. Basically, feel that uh, the whole jungle is there, so they go around and eat every all the food and everything. And they're like, "Well, it's mine, it's ours. That's the rule of our, our people type thing." And they're like, "Well, that's wrong." Yeah, to share. Uh, yeah, the uh, the roots are jerks. They are. They are complete are bastards. Um, and then. As most teenage kids do, have fallen out with their parents and then runs away from the said parent yeah. and then knocks himself unconscious off a big metal pipe. Yeah, it's all children do. Uh, and Ash, <laughs> Ash basically hangs up on his on his mom and goes, oh, "Someone else calling me. Bye." Yeah. <laughs> I'm sh- right. I don't know, like I don't know whether it's that he's just useless, which I'm perfectly willing to believe and I will make some points later on about this mm-hmm. or it's that his mother is just so gratuitously overbearing about everything <laughs> well he was basically cast out of his house at, at ten, well I was going to say at 10 but he's, he's still 10 because eternal 10 because that's the thing yeah <laughs> but he has also had those 22 years. decades worth of adventures yeah uh, so his mum can't be, you know. It depends how often she checks in because if she's checking in every day for twenty five years, that's quite full on. Yeah, that is that is a lot. Wait, so maybe point, it just so happens that. Hmm? Sorry, as you can say at this point, have we discussed? Have we have we identified the tree? Uh, no. <laughs> is that is no. our secrets of secret jungle? It's a tree, uh, it's Zarud's hometown land. Yeah, have we discussed it? Is it is it are its properties clear at this point, or have I have no. I jumped the gun? No, not yet. So the healing the healing springs from the yes. tree. Yeah, uh, we get to know about it just before Popo meets Ash, because he goes. Oh, and- okay. Because he goes, oh, I've got to save this Pokemon. Um, let's get him this way. And then he throws a bit of fruit at it to make it angry. To break its yeah. anger from like the other Pokemon that it's fighting to get beaten up on. <laughs> Is that the, the flying green one? Yeah. Yes. Wait, Robbie, name, name check. Fly- <laughs> Flygon. Yes, Flygon. And Flygon Fly is also gun. a total prick, it seems. Like, who's just, like, starting fights all the time. Whose ability in uh, in English is severely lacking. <laughs> <laughs> Can't speak English. Yeah, it's that is a, it's a big downer. It's the job application yeah. for Pokemon and not being able to speak English. It's, uh... Yeah. So, is, is, is Flygon's Pokedex entry is, like, uh, you know, flying green lizard and total bastard. <laughs> uh, let me just check. I, I like I'm, we're uh, going to use so many of these Pokedex entry checks. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I would God, I would absolutely love if if it was even remotely close to that. Well, no, but... they'll have they all have different uh, different entries for the for all the different games that they've appeared in. Yeah. Generally speaking, they like to try and mix it up. So oh, yeah. let's see. I would have to point out that all Pokemon are technically bastards. <laughs> true. You, you mean just not by being born through not marriage? Is that yeah, that exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Are we? So is this is this really the stance our podcast wants to take on animals being born? <laughs> so I I I don't want to like just insert this at a, a random point, but I feel it's important for me to get this off my chest because this is the thing that would annoy a lot of other Pokemon fans. Is that there's a scene fairly early on, I think it's within the first five or ten minutes, where there are some Pokemon gathered in the jungle. Now. Yeah. I'm looking at them going, why the hell is this Pokemon in a jungle? You know, it's like a it's like a steel type or something like that. I can't remember the exact example, but the reason that's just come back into my head is because the first Pokedex entry for Flygon that I've just read is Fly this is from Pokemon Ruby, so way back. Okay. Flygon is nicknamed the elemental spirit of the desert. <laughs> All right. So this is what I mean when, you know, they don't, the the Pokemon Company International, they don't, they don't really care about any of this stuff. That's, (laughs) it is, it's so obvious, you know. It could, it could hurt our brand. I don't know. Like we're still selling merchandise hand over fist. I think we're good here. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Is Flygon really from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was where it first appeared, Ruby and Sapphire. Shit, I played that. So, yeah, and don't remember all the way, <laughs> all the way back. Um, yeah, and again, they just they they just they double down on the desert spirit thing on the Sapphire and the Emerald Pokedex entry. Fire red and leaf green, it hides itself by kicking up desert sand. <laughs> uh, don't to do that in the desert. <laughs> Totally, yeah. No wonder it's so. No wonder it's such a bastard. It's thousands of miles from home. <laughs> it's like, where's my fucking sand? Yeah, it's sand. It's literally, I, honestly, you would not believe this. I'm, I'm looking at these right now. De- Diamond and pearl, desert spirit, platinum, desert spirit, black and white, known as the desert spirit, X and Y. Yeah, all the way, all the way through, even up to Pokemon Shield released when two years ago, something like that. <laughs> Nickname the desert spirit. But nah, I'll just put it in the jungle. Until it's now, <laughs> until now, it's like yeah, it's like oh well, you know, like ah, it's 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 a new it's a new year. Like 2019 was the desert spirit. What about what? What if we made him the jungle asshole? Would that would that uh, <laughs> <laughs> would, that, would that work? And it's like yes. well, you know, apparently people who played is... the game that he started in don't remember him. So <laughs> yeah, as the Pokedex entry for the new games, Flygon. This Pokemon was originally regarded the Desert Spirit, but further research has, in fact, led us to believe it is the Jungle Asshole. <laughs> Thank God, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Arceus as well. It's going to be so good. <laughs> so we get the real uh, sort of uh, yeah. like deep and gritty Pokemon Pokedex entries. Yeah. Um, it's going to be going to be dope. I'm looking forward to it. So. Oh, man. There's a few in there because there's like the big panda one. I want to say it's Pancham, but that's the small one, right? Uh, yeah, Pangoro. Yes. Pangoro. Okay. It's the big yeah. nasty guy. How many arms? He doesn't have? have four arms. No, he's only got two arms. Oh, he got two arms. <laughs> he's only yeah. got two arms. Sad state of affairs. Um, so yeah, we are. Uh, I, I guess we're at the point now where yeah, uh, the the Coco. The uh, totally not Tarzan has uh, rendered themselves unconscious and in a river. Yep. Where Ash jumps in to save him because he's exploring the jungle. Yep. Ash is just literally in the right place at the right time uh, for everything. That like that kid is just a magnet for for danger and problems. Yes. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He is. It, it does get to a point where you have to you have to really ask yourself: Is Ash? Is Ash the problem? Is an absolute magnet for catastrophe. Because are you going, you going with like the Batman a, a analogy? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> is, is Batman exactly. The problem? Yeah. The problem. It's, yeah, I feel like if we if we take Ash out of the equation, do all the world's problems just disappear? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh, did... uh... Yeah, he uh, he saves the kid, and they uh, they end up in hospital. Uh, and uh, Coco uh, does not take kindly to waking up in a hospital. Full of people. Indoors. 
Oh, yeah, we should, also, we should also mention the argument that the reason he ran away is because he was asking if he was a who. Was a who? Zarud. Zarud. I should remember I, I have I have absolutely missed this part of the conversation is uh, where you try to remember that one specific word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we'll we'll go back and forth on what the right one is um, every time. Every time. I was uh, <laughs> I was uh, getting a name wrong at work today. <laughs> An actual person's name. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, the, this guy. And they're like, no, it's this guy. And and it's like, yeah, so what 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 we're doing about this guy? No, it's this guy. It's literally, I can say his name wrong. That person doesn't work here. Yeah. Stop saying his name. He's an athlete or a football manager. Why are you saying this? <laughs> Which one are you choosing? <laughs> oh, brilliant. No, I have no idea. Anyway, um, yeah, I should say Coco is, run, is running away because he's had an argument because he doesn't think he... Don't think that his dad is telling the truth about what he is, because he keeps saying, "Oh, you're so rude." Yes, but uh, he's he's a... like... but he's human. Might be some truth to that. Yeah, there might be some truth to that. Yeah. Uh, so... Anyway, um, so you're on so he gets knocked out, wakes up in a hospital, uh, goes a bit at, uh, ate crazy and runs away, jumping really high. Because he jumps good. Yeah. Uh, and then almost gets run over again. Second time in the movie. Yeah. So who left him as a baby and he walks into the middle yeah. of the road. That's right, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but then he calms down like another Pokemon and then starts to befriend Nash. And Nash is going just like... Uh, Gushing all over him, like, but oh, you're amazing! Oh, <laughs> you can this talk is, to Pokemon. It's called is it? It's no, no, something. It's a big the Pokemon that runs rampant. Big turtle thing. Yeah. Oh, uh... oh, God. I can't remember the name of it. Dreadnought. Yeah, Dreadnought. That's it. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he like just get, sort of calms it down by giving it an aggressive hug. Very uh, aggressive. <laughs> it's tracks. It's just like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna sumo wrestle this out, and then I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, like tickle you a little bit because we're both animals, right? You know, yeah. we are Pokemon. <laughs> uh, and then I'm gonna be like, oh fuck, yeah, I don't know, I need to go. <laughs> Shit's bad. <laughs> Too many people. Yeah. yeah. And then he starts having a conversation with Pikachu because he can talk to all Pokemon but not humans. Yeah. Yes. And yet, picks up English surprisingly quickly. And also, two <laughs> films ago, and when they brought out Pokemon, the movie I Choose You, and they were sort of, they sort of introduced this um, multiverse concept Right. It was a, a sort of like reboot of the series, but it's a different universe in which some things that had previously been established no longer exist and some things still exist because, you know, like I said, fuck it, they don't care. Um, and, and I choose you, Pikachu speaks English, right? <laughs> he, he says something to Ash, which is sort of generally considered to be one of the the cringiest moments of any Pokemon film because just it's like five it's something like ten minutes from the end and Pikachu looks at Ash and says something really cheesy in English. But um he, you know in Family Guy when the guy in the back of the truck speaks Spanish and then explains in Spanish that that's the only thing he ever learned. No, sorry, speaks English and then explains that's the only thing he ever learned how to say in English. Yeah. It must be a similar situation for Pikachu. Sorry, I only ever Except learned I how understood. to say this one really cheesy thing to Ash, yeah. and now I can no longer speak English. Yeah. <laughs> can you see this English thing really, it, it really got to me. Like the idea of Pikachu speaking English and it not being Ryan Reynolds' voice at this point is uh, worrying. 
Um, also, spoilers for Detective Pikachu if you have not watched that, but you know, time, time's up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I, 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 either that or, you know, like I think we discussed this many times, Colin, that Danny DeVito would have been a perfect, like, acceptable Pikachu. Yes. Uh, I, I was all for yes. Danny DeVito, man, <laughs> being Pikachu, but then I, right. I don't even think he knew what Pikachu was. <laughs> Yeah, Danny, Danny DeVito is uh, too too busy, not knowing other things, and knowing yeah. the, the stuff that matters. Being a big asshole, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, or uh, Danny Glover's friend in the new Jumanji films. I think is pretty much the only other thing I am aware of Danny DeVito does these days. So Danny Glover's friend in the new Jumanji, yeah. really. Do you want to know? Like, uh, I, I made this uh, startling discovery, and I'm I'm going to fact check this. Uh, mm-hmm. Just in case, while we're while we're on the topic of uh, Danny Glover, uh-huh. uh, Lethal Weapon, <clears throat> Lethal Weapon was released in uh, nineteen eighty-seven. Uh-huh. So, uh, Danny Glover was born in in nineteen forty-six, uh, and, wow. and I, I, if you can remember that, the premise of uh, <laughs> Lethal Weapon is. I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking 41. He's 41. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, a man reserves the right to declare that he's getting too old for anything he feels he's getting too old for totally. at any time. But and yeah, I, I, I just I knew where you were going with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh That's man! So he... Five years he was expecting to die in the 1980s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he was uh, well, Mel Gibson, like. So he was even younger, I think. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah. <laughs> but um, like in his early 30s. Probably, but uh, I don't. Don't police officers oh. retire like really early? Uh, my understanding is the way it works is that they just generally announce retirement whenever and then a week later they're shot. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> None of them ever make it to retirement. No, so what, no, what, right. what you're saying is the, the, the government and the police force don't want to pay out a pension so they hire a hitman to kill them. It is that's a very right. big scene. It's like, and, oh wait. And, the, and there's, there's £27 million pounds in an unused retirement party bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they keep putting money into it and the parties are never happening. Oh, it goes to the first police officer who turns out to be fireproof, bulletproof and carproof. <laughs> <laughs> and all the unpoisoned... Uh, oh yeah. Poisoned. Unpoisonable. Unpoisonable. Uh, yeah. yeah. All those other things. Um, what were we talking about? Sorry, Pokemon. I, I derailed this. We were talking about the weapon. Uh, we were talking about Pokemon, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah the, so, Co- Coco has just announced uh, that he's getting too old for this and he wants to retire. <laughs> In perfect Zarud. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and sorry, sorry. It came out more like Za, 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 Za. Rude. Yeah. Which is, uh, Heavily entertaining. You know, the thing is, is like I know that the you know that that voice could have come out of Pokemon, and I would have found that nine hundred percent less awkward. And I, I don't yes. know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then he goes into like the making friends scenario with Ash that you're mm-hmm. on about. Mont- Mont- montage number two. Yeah. Montage two. Yeah. And then he gets all the <laughs> montage uh, two. The virus takes Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this yeah. is actually this is, the, this is the montage that makes me think of mannequin because they go like clothes shopping. <laughs> uh, God, it's uh, absurd. Yeah, and then they then they head to um, they head back into the forest because he's he's misses the Dada. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, and then Dada goes, "Yes, you are human, and I found you here." And take him to like the the abandoned research lab, shows him a picture, and like this is this is you in this picture with your parents. Yeah. So, the great. There's there's a lot of great bits about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but 
sort of the the first incredible thing is Coco and and the Zarud standing there having this like obvious argument, and Ash is like, I wonder what they're talking about. It's like they're fucking shouting at each other, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like they they're full on yelling at each other. Surely, like in Pikachu must be like, it's like, oh Pikachu, I wonder what they're talking about. Pikachu must be like, oh, for this yeah. is for... <laughs> Uh, and then, <laughs> I mean, sorry, I think this is the bit where, yeah, like you say, they, they go to the research lab and he shows him the picture. Uh, he's like, you know, I found you here. By the time I, I found you, by the time I found this place, it was already ruined. And there's this photo. And and then Ash is like, you know, I'm sorry, I never knew my dad either. Or like, I, you know, my I, I, like I know what it's like to to you know have an absent father i like i don't know what the relation the, the like i'm trying to relate here it's like yeah i know your dad's not around but it's like is he dead yeah. oh. so this is this this caused like quite a stir in the in the online uh pokemon community right because it's just a running a continuing thing that no one has a clue who ash's dad is or what happened to him where he went there was a theory for a long time that his dad was the mr mime that lives with his mum. <laughs> Oh, I saw that one, and that's a glorious, <laughs> glorious, glorious thing. Oh, you know, oh, or like, God. or that he was like at some point turned into a Mister Mime or or something like that. But yeah, the moment they could have gone further with this, I thought it would have been a really cool little, not an Easter egg, but it would have been cool for them to go a little into more detail here and not just have him say one thing and actually answer nothing. You know, I think the uh, the, the bit that that made me laugh the most is when he's like, you know, uh, my dad used to say like the map to your uh to your whatever future is inside of you i was like holy shit ash's dad is jigsaw that's what this is <laughs> it's like, that's, that's what this has been leading to this whole time is like ash's dad has just been all you you want to play a game uh, the map's inside of you fucking find your way at this uh house of knives or whatever, I don't know, like, it's the only explanation I can come up with. Oh, man, it's such an funny. arbitrary line. Yeah. It's, out there. it's like, yeah, you know, like, I was old enough to understand and remember what my dad said. I'm 10. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, I don't know where he's been. Yeah. And no one exa- knows. No, exactly. Total <laughs> mystery. It would have thrown a real, a real spanner in the works if I sat down and said, you know, my dad used to always say to me, Zarud, Zaza, Zaza, Zarud. Zood. Oh, that would have been incredible. You know, I would, like it's like, oh shit, I didn't recognize my dad with the cape. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Huge twist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not the first child he's brought in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <the street. laughs> oh my god. It's oh. yeah. It's so so absurd. Yeah. Um. This then, of course, uh, they, this is where we get into the conversation about the. Uh, What's her name? There's, they've spoken to this scientist woman before at some point. Mm-hmm. Ash and Pikachu have, and I think they recognise the logo on mm-hmm. her lab coat, and it's the same one that's shown in the yeah in, in the photo. Yeah, uh, the SOS Brigade. Yeah, it's it's uh, like for uh, for you in case you you don't know this, Robbie. But when we did uh we did a, a series called uh, uh the 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 melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, she uh, formed a school club called the SOS Brigade. Oh, okay. And it very much looks like the SOS Brigade logo. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Crossover incoming. Oh, yeah. God. I hope not. I, like, I need a rest from <laughs> the mental taxation of the last two seasons we've done. Oh, uh, so you're like Blaine and fucking... And Haruhi. We watched the, we watched the movie of Haruhi. Uh, the disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya. The movie is two hours and forty three minutes long, oh <clears> and God. we managed to talk about it for I think almost four hours. Is that right, Colin? <laughs> so wow. that explain the two episodes were about two hours each. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was it was ridiculous. So yeah, we'll, we'll stop here and then we'll talk about the rest later. It's, <laughs> it, was, it was insane. So much. Um, so yeah, they they, they naturally. Uh, take the hint and go to go to the science lab um mm-hmm. where team rocket are working yeah well yeah the bio biotope company is called yes it? yes biotope 
Can we, can um, we talk about you know, Swig? Yeah. <laughs> Swig. Yeah, Meowth has this like little bowl, like long haired bowl cut <laughs> along the way. And it's fucking adorable. Uh, it's yeah. so ridiculous. The skies is. I was, um, yeah, so we should mention that Team Rocket's kind of been fallen Ash as they always do because they always want that Pikachu for some reason. Ash is Pikachu. Yeah. yeah. But what's the reason behind that? Except from it. So um, I believe it's the orig- it goes back to the original anime, right? Yeah, exactly. I think actually the very first, I think the very first episode, I, I think. Yeah. They see it uh, as really I, powerful. If I remember right. Then. Yeah, that's right. And then. Sorry, go on. Uh, no, just uh, 25 years later, here we are. They've, uh, <laughs> they've still, everyone else is aware of, you know, 890 additional Pokemon, but Team Rocket still want that Pikachu. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They are. But they I, are aging remarkably well, I have to say. Jesse well, and James are. They look younger. I was going to ask a question about their voice actors because yeah. I think Jesse's voice actor is the same by the sounds of it as it was in the original show, or as close as damn it. Um, Meowth seems a little off to me, and James, because I haven't really watched much Pokemon. Just seems a mile off from what I remember James sounding like. Yeah, James's voice actor. If it hasn't changed, if it hasn't changed more than I mean, I know it's changed once. It may have changed more than once, but the, at the very beginning, they had a much darker uh, aura around James. Actually, around Team Rocket in general was much darker. Um, yeah. And then that's sort of like over time been diluted and diluted, and uh, they're effectively like. Can you call them comic relief? Like none of it's particularly hard hit, and I don't know if comic relief is the right term, but they're definitely just in there for sort of slapstick comedy. Mm. Um, they're sort of uh, the the Balkan skull of the Pokemon world. Yeah, um, if, yeah. If you like Power Rangers, that's that's all I can yep. think of. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the, yeah. They're they're in for for the long game. Um, yeah, they certainly are. <laughs> I right, so. Uh, because they've been following them when I the meet when Ash meets the lady from the company, the research team, they they sniff some uh nefarious deeds behind it. I'm like, oh, that seems a bit legit, too legit. We're going to go investigate <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, and then they sneak in and just bungle around. I don't even know how they get in. Dress, put the disguise. They're like the A team, like they just put disguises on, like and it's no one goes, oh yeah, they've been there for years. Yeah, they're like looking for a. They they end up with a USB stick type thing or like some sort of memory card at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's just the one that Coco was wearing. No, maybe no, no. It's like a credit card size thing. Right, got a, okay. Basically, got a swipe card. Um, so yeah. James is uh, apparently is the quite a bit of a good hacker. It seems. Yes. Um, yeah, they have all all through all through the years in numerous different films and all of the scenes of the anime. Team Rocket have access to like state of the art equipment and getaway vehicles and all sorts of ridiculous contraptions. Um, and can't catch, can't catch a Pikachu. I, I don't know. And I I question whether their heart is still in it. If I'm totally honest with you, I don't, I don't think they won. I think they're just telling the boss, yeah, yeah, no, we'll get it, we'll get it, yeah, and just keep no. yes. Yeah. Five o'clock. Uh, Team Rocket blasting away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never did that this time. They no, just kind of disappeared. No. Yeah, they didn't get their blasting off again. Yeah. Yeah. They or or they like didn't actually yeah they didn't do jack shit it was just that fucking cramorant yeah whatever yeah. it's called uh, yeah caused problems yeah they just uh, basically was there just so they can progress the plot of it um yeah yeah so they're there and tried to hack into the 
uh, get to the the leader, the head scientist room because no one's allowed in there for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Zed, yeah. is that right? Doctor Zed, yeah, yeah. Doctor Zed. Right. Doctor Zed. Is that from? Which to me is Borderlands. suspiciously close to Zerud, but you know, what should we call the scientist? Doctor Zerud? No, no, we can't call him that. That's the name of the Pokemon. Doctor Z. You know, we can't. We can move away from the letter Z. Yeah. Zed, let's call him Zed. <laughs> There's a uh, the the something waters. There's the diabolical Doctor Z. Uh, oh, what's it fucking called? They did an episode of uh, Mystery Science Theater about it. Keep, keep talking. I'll 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 you know satisfy my own curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And then we kind of need to mention the bird that Ash tries to catch her at the start of the film, where basically he sends Pikachu to go and fight it, and then it pretty much tries to swallow it whole. Yeah, that's the Cramorant. Yeah. 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 And then, that's right. And then uh, Pikachu, uh, Pikachu basically uses the lightning bolt, or where it is inside its gut. Yeah. And it just kind of laughs it off and then spits him out. But then that's... Yeah, which is brutal if you think about it, isn't it? Yeah. Even, even uh, Team what Rocket is the mentioned context that. There? So we see, uh, we see that is Cameron a, like not bothered by electricity because I think later on it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it it seems to handle that pretty well. The the thunderbolt at the start of the film, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Didn't didn't get bit, crispy though. anyway, like uh, until like at the end of the movie. But um, that appears because Team Rocket bumbles and basically throws the credit card down the stairs, and then it kind of picks up and eats it, and then flies away. Uh, all before Ash and Coco get there. Uh, and then so moving on back to where we started this. As Coco got, and the people get to the lab, and they go, "Oh look, look! Oh, it's it's Al! All the shit! It's... I thought you died, type thing." Baby <laughs> called Al. Yeah, he's called Al. He sounds like a guy that's sitting at the the bar and cheers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's ridiculous. Anyway, um, <laughs> and then scan like the the necklace uh, ring thing he's got around his neck. Yeah. yeah. Which is the thing that Zarud gave him saying he'd found it when yeah. he found him. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's actually a, pl- uh, a tracking chip. No. No, the tracking chip is the thing that they, they attach that to the guy, to his clothing, I want to say. Uh, yeah, because he was wearing okay. a t-shirt the, at that point. Yeah. The key thing, the ring thing is like it has data about the location of the. That's the, the, right. The, yeah. ring, the, the light. That's right. Like, can we like? And I, I we're we're going to talk a little bit about motive and me as a person at this point. So, it's clear. It's it's clear that uh, Doctor Z kind of like is like, hey, so this this fountain could probably help a lot of people, probably including himself. Um. And I'm kind of like having this harkens back to the conversations I've had where people are like, yeah, well, it's like, think of the terrible thing that Thanos did. And it's like, you know, he just clicked his fingers and got rid of half the population. It's like, and he's like, when he, what he could have done is clicked his fingers and like given the world double the food. It's like, yeah, but nobody learns a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't overeat. And it's like, so I fall down on the side of it's like, hey, uh, Thanos was totally nuts, but Maybe, maybe not totally crazy. Uh, you know, he's, he wasn't targeting anyone in particular. This was entirely random, um, and he was perfectly willing for him to himself to be a part of that. Uh, oh, but in Dangerous this example, water. Uh, he's like, "Hey, so uh, we really want to like find this fountain because it's medically relevant to helping the world." Oh no, no, no! That belongs to this one Pokemon. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, no can do. Exactly. Uh, 
it's a to totally immovable. I, you know, not even suggesting that we have to like cause any fuss or here anything here, but yeah, just it's not it's not going to happen. Sorry, yeah. not in not in the Zarud schedule. No, <laughs> to have uh, the life waters. Yeah, well, you know, we already uh, always state that the Zarud is complete our bastards and tricks of yeah. the forest. Um, yeah, but... the, the movie I was trying to think of, by the way, is called The Bloody Waters of Doctor Z. Oh, nice. Uh, how bloody was water? Pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's a good episode of Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and he basically tells, uh, oh, sorry, your, your parents are dead to the kid. Of course, he doesn't understand because he doesn't understand English. Yeah, it's the way Ash tells him as well. He's like, do you understand what he's trying to tell you? He's telling you that your parents no longer live in our world. It's like, so what world do they live in? <laughs> like, I, you know, I, I appreciate you trying to sort of, uh, you know, cushion the blow, as it were. But also, again, you're saying it in English. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't speak English. Yeah. So yeah, which is sort of like the the you know this this movie's equivalent of just speaking louder in the hope that that sinks. In. That's how you it's speak like, to you know, foreigners. Your parents are dead. <laughs> Sorry. That's how you speak to foreigners. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's how that works. I understand. Yeah. Um, they definitely Shout, don't hate that. in point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just just John, speak John, louder. Please. People don't dislike that at yeah. all. No. Uh, so that's the whole John Please <laughs> thing, I'm sure. I find it really funny the the issues that this operation have had in finding the location of the great tree, right? Because first of all, at the very beginning of the film, it's made clear that the jungle is in the immediate outskirts of this town. Yeah, <laughs> and then you see the tree, and it towers above everything else, and it's this gigantic. And with all the equipment they've got, when all they needed was a helicopter to just fly. <laughs> Over. Definitely not visible from the sky. You know, I mean, it's it's just oh god. This is the thing about Pokemon films for me. Like, I, uh, you know, I'm a huge Pokemon fan, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be good for me to consume it. If the word Pokemon is on it, I will I will consume it. I don't need the games to be incredible or to improve much year on year which they don't they stay the same and that's fine just take that nostalgia and inject it directly into my veins that's all i'm looking for but the the films it's not like we're talking about a company that has you know if you take the, something that made me suffer through this movie a little bit was that only the night before i really randomly watched uh the emperor's new groove right awesome. uh, yeah, which I hadn't seen for a while, and I, I coincidentally watched that the night before, and it's obviously a great Disney movie yeah. with great animation, all this kind of stuff. And then I watched the Pokemon film, and it's not like we're transferring to a company with you know less resources. Like the Pokemon company bring in more money than Disney do. <laughs> this is not a this is not a company that have to skimp on budget when it comes to like getting good storytelling or superior animation. They just, they just know that it's going to be consumed anyway. So the, the the film and the anime is littered with all these little holes in it, you know, where it's just why why have you made that decision? Why have they not been able to find it when literally at the start of the film you make it a, so clear that it's extremely easy to find, you know? Yeah, it's the the kind of logic that these things are seated in. Yeah, the, the... yeah. Highly weird. I mean, so just before we spoil it all a bit more and get like even more pointless, why why is it been so hard for him to find it again? Essentially, um, because obviously he was he put the chip he puts the chip on the on Coco as and he runs away because he's like, yeah. no, my parents are dead, even though he doesn't understand any of it, um. And goes goes straight to the fountain uh, of life, or whatever you want to call it, and then uh, goes, "Oh, what? What's this noise? People have followed me. How have they done that?" Because he finds the tracking chip and goes, "Oh, what's this?" 
and then they appear yeah. and then you have like the the backlog and the backstory and you find out that Dr. Z's killed the parents uh, in a car chase from the lab. In a car no. chase where, where they're having a full on fucking conversation oh. at 90 miles an hour between cars. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. Actually, sorry, can we just very quickly step back to uh, the bit where Dr. Z is regaling them of the conversation about, like, you know, his parents wanting to shut down the project. It's like, yes, here we are, two casual scientists holding our baby in the lab. <laughs> it's like, yeah, wait, what? Did you, was there no childcare? Was, uh, do you always work <laughs> from each other? What is this? Like, it's, <laughs> it's such yeah. a, is that we need to make sure that, that the, the, the father and the mother are there, but maybe also the baby. It's like, what would be a good sense? <laughs> well, it's, it's about work matter, so probably in the lab doctor's yeah, edge yeah. there too because obviously he's part of the argument it's like well does that not seem weird well no because we've also said they can't find this big fucking tree so i guess yeah exactly <laughs> yeah yeah people people bring their babies to labs right <laughs> oh yeah 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 all the time yeah okay. you, your lab has a soft play right yeah <laughs> yeah so broken it's so broken i had i had a uh, i had little uh uh bathtubs for them in my lab <laughs> they're still having this filled with like uh, concrete blocks but uh... <laughs> I, I kind of thought as well that like, I thought that I thought that filling in these storyline gaps in the form of um, flashbacks was like a was a little bit lazy I, I feel like this could have been covered you know in a in a sort of more more substantial format but again well oh. You it was... can't analyze these things too deeply with Pokemon films. You really can't because no. um, <laughs> it's like, crazy. Fall out of the car. It, like it, this, the, okay, so we're, we're going to get into this because they they crash their car. The car is in a billion pieces and on fire, mm -hmm. and they're just lying outside of it <laughs> with the baby already in its like eco chamber or whatever you want to call it and the mother's like oh i'm just gonna push push the baby into the water with my <laughs> with my last breath and it's like well you don't look hurt and like you've mir miraculously ended up like flying right next to each other all three yeah. of you um and then dr said walks away he's like well that's the end of that chapter and then there's a, like 30 seconds and it's like so they're just going to stand up, right? Like, Because I feel like this is okay. And then it all explodes. And it's like, did they die in that explosion? Because yeah. they were too stupid to get away? Because they don't seem yeah. that hard. Absolutely. No. Yeah. Well, it's incredible. should also uh, point out the, uh, the big argument they're saying, oh, we should work with the, the Pokemon, get their permission to actually look at the phone. Which is kind yep. of, and he was like, "No, we should just take it. It's we need it." And then he went, goes proper yeah. insane, like he walks yeah. away from that argument and like, "No, we must do that." And the little like way insane is like, "Holy shit!" Maybe he wasn't right in the head from like the gecko, and the maybe done a psych he, check he, on the guy. He, yeah, it was definitely a. It was evil for evil's sake. You know, there was no justification to to his level of. Uh, cruelty, considering what his actual ob ob objective was, you know, because well, um, they could they could have made him just a flawed like they could have made him a guy with genuinely good intentions, who was going about something in a slightly immoral way, but be sort of more relatable than just a sort of psych psychopath. <laughs> well, and to, like, to top up on the psychopath part of course they realise that they're being followed because there's a really big explosion for some reason <laughs> on the way into the jungle and they're so like hey um, what do you think that was <laughs> I, I don't know but probably not a good guy yeah we're probably, yeah. probably going to find it explosions regularly and then it's like oh cool he's brought his robot spider from wild wild west for yeah. Some <laughs> what? yeah. Why is this? I actually did really like the animation in this bit. I thought that was cool. Yeah, it was. Um, 
actually to, to be fair to them like uh one area one element of the the movie i guess they didn't really skimp on is i think the animation was at least of a, a decent standard so yeah it was de- it, it was definitely um the, the the last couple of pokemon films have been a slight step up animation wise compared to everything that's come before and uh and this one sort of continued that which is quite nice because yeah if they're gonna do you know, an hour. I still, I don't think a Pokemon film should ever be an hour and forty minutes long. I really don't. It's, it's long. It's a long movie for a for that. You know, this sort of content, which is so Nothing. sparse. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but the, so the so very be said over such a long period. Exactly, and like the very least they can do is make it look as as nice as possible. So I guess that I guess that is one thing. Yeah, the animation is pretty nice, but I really particularly liked it in that bit because they have that contrast of. Now I'm not an expert and don't know any of the how to technically describe this, but when they have that uh, combination of different animation styles, that contrast because it looked like the it looked like the big robotic spider was. Uh, was it like was it CGI? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it was on the and then the back and then the background was just the not I'm sure it's not hand illustrated anymore, but the background was just the standard background and it had that contrast of animation styles. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, you might find the actual background was probably CGI too, but because it's static, it doesn't have the same motion. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, typically what they'll do is is uh, for for more complex elements, they'll do CGI. Um, as, as, like from from my deep in depth research of watching Corridor Crew videos on YouTube, um, they uh, <laughs> like essentially you would go to CGI to work with scale more accurately. Um, right. Because it is really difficult to get scale correct when you have to consider. Where the camera perspective is supposed to be and then the relative size of your characters or whatever else in relation to each other in every single frame whereas if you're working with a 3d like a cgi asset the scale of it is the scale of it and then you just maneuver it to be in whatever position you need it to be in so it it always remains of a relative size yeah you get to move the the camera in in the 3d application the 3d space yeah yeah right cool yeah Um, interesting Overlay over, um, yeah, it's like uh, that was kind of covered a while in the uh, the movies that made us when they talked about Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that. Um, anyway, so they had like a big fight, and then they start losing, and then they run away. At, at that point, I think. Well, what's the big so... robot? The big fight is over the big robot, so because the big robot is going to cause cause some damage, mm-hmm. and basically uh, the Dada <laughs> goes to all the other Pokemon, is like, "Hey guys, uh, things are not looking so good. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe you could help us out." And then they throw fruit at him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think uh... Which was like, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Because they don't understand English. Well, they, they don't understand no, the, the root. No, exactly. Well, what language you're speaking. Yeah. yeah. And they don't, see, only the kid can understand that. But uh, I'm sure they had, like, the fight, the, the initial appearance had a fight, and they lost that, and then retreat, re- retreated a bit, and they progressed through the jungle a bit more. Because they got to the, because they ended up getting to the, um, the fountain area, where they launched two big fuck off missiles into the big tree that they can't find from anywhere. Even like a satellite yeah. image would probably show that. And they're assuming they're satellites because they seem to have video voice calls and iPads that they can access in the jungle. Yeah. Two yeah. randomly fired missiles seem to find that tree pretty well. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and they, they basically broke the, the pressure, the, the, the magic pressure or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, and then so the so he like well all right we're going to need to stop this shit and rally together some troops and then the other guy is, who's been injured from the first fight goes I'm, I'm going to get yeah Dana I'm going to get these Pokemon is injured yeah oh well, we should probably mention that uh, there is a, a flashback of Dada using his superpower which is basically to bring things back from the dead 
or like close close from that. Yeah, he has yeah. the he has the power to heal. The jungle yeah, jungle good. healing, which has been put into the which has been put into the games as well. Oh, really? He has a move called jungle healing, yeah, which restores restores HP or something like that. Yeah. Um, Zaru is in the games. Zaru is now in now available in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and you can get a special Dada Zaru with the cape as well. Because of this movie. Because of this movie, yeah. Yeah, that's so that's why the focus on. Yeah, my my dad has a rude. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh. Um, uh, should we also mention like, uh, there's a the scene when they were in the the town. They watched fireworks and they came to get the fireworks because there was Pokemon in the firework gun cannon, but. If I were to celebrate some legendary mystical Pokemon from the future that brought back an egg from the future or something. Oh god. <laughs> yes. And then it's, it's just, just a story. It's also great storytelling. What is the Pokemon? Is it Celebi or Celebi or Celebi, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. The, the great magic of that is like I, I love the the elder Zarud explaining it's like, you know, some say uh that when the jungle's out of equilibrium that Celebi just disappears. It's like, others say <laughs> that it brings an egg back from the future. It's like, are those really my two options? But also, <laughs> also, surely one of them is clearly easier to prove. <laughs> ah. Like, 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 well, he's, he's not, they're, they're not here. Did they leave a future egg? <laughs> Well, I guess it's that one then. Like, it's just. I think it, I think it did that. Is, is there precedent for the future egg? Is that yeah. a thing? Yeah. Well, uh, go on, go on. that uh, was like the that was like the elder of the village with the fire attack. Thank yeah, you for the fireworks. But, and then in, in the world of Pokemon, is there like is 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 there future eggs? Is that a thing? <laughs> is now. It's definitely eggs. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm never, I've never heard the term. <laughs> heard the term future egg. Uh, but yeah, apparently the whole thing started with an egg. It was it was chaos and nothingness, and then an egg appeared, and that's where uh, that's where Arceus came from, and then the whole thing began. That's apparently how the Pokemon universe came into creation it was via an egg. All right. Wow. Like, are we yeah. basically saying it has roots in creationism? Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, wait. Yeah, absolutely. Does that make Mork a Pokemon? Mork? What, Mark, Mark from Mork and Mindy. You know, Rob Williams <laughs> whole character. He did. He did come out of an egg, didn't he? Yeah. He's all, all egg-based. Yes. <laughs> he's like, he's, if there's two things I know about Mork, it's rainbow suspenders and eggs. <laughs> uh, and uh, was it Nanu Nanu, isn't it? Nanu Nanu, of Nanu, course. Nanu. Yeah. Um, I they they I think they unless I'm unless I'm failing to remember an earlier appearance, they have this celebration with the fireworks and stuff for Celebi, as we just mentioned. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's purely so they can then have Celebi appear at the very end. To uh, illustrate the fact that the jungle is, uh, you know, harmonious and that everything is fine, so he has appeared. But I think that's it, isn't it? That's the only time that you see Celebi is just right at the very end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and on the scarf. Yeah. They, they talk a lot about Celebi. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they did. They yeah, also like... released the shiny Celebi for the games at the same time as Dad Azarud, so you can get one of them as well. Uh, I do love the fact that when the elder is like, he's like, you know, the day you came here, jungle went to shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, are you trying to blame me for this? He's like, let me finish talking. And it's like, I don't see how you're going to turn this one around. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't. He totally doesn't. It's like, you know, it's like, well, you, the day you came to me here, there's future egg and no Celebi. So <laughs> maybe your fault. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. You're the future. Right? Please don't take that too personally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crazy. Uh, anyway, as 
just for the mention, because we keep talking about this cape, and it's on on the flag at the end. See it in his flag in the in the cape. As he, it hangs in the branches of the tr- treehouse. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I I literally watched this today, like finished at eight. <laughs> I should I should explain then that uh, Robbie, you and I were were talking just before we start recording. Uh, you, you've watched this uh, once, you said, Robbie, and and, and a couple I, of a bits. And I I watched it once about. Um, I think it was. When did it come out? Was it the eighth? It was the twelfth. The twelfth. No, you're totally right. You're, no, you're right. It was the eighth. It, the was Friday, it the eighth? Friday the eighth. Uh, I think so. Oops, sorry. Just yes, you're right. Punched, it was Friday the eighth. Punched my microphone. Yeah. So if I yeah Friday the eighth. So I think I watched it on the tenth. And then between then and now, I've gone into it and rewatched specific parts of it. Uh, because, um, yeah, like I said to you before we started recording, Stephen, I watched a couple of reviews online on YouTube of this film because I was because I knew that we were going to be talking about it. I was interested to see what other people thought, and I sort of your um, say that you thought it was one of the best Pokemon films ever made. So that made me want to go back and rewatch some parts of it because I thought, what are we? Did we watch the same film? Um, it's a low. It is a low bar, though. I mean, to be fair, it's a low bar, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, the first one is very good. I must and admit, I, like the nostalgia factor. Yeah, the first ab- one is a good one. absolutely. And the parts, the parts of that film that aren't filler, it is a genuinely, it's a compelling storyline, because Mewtwo, uh, you know, the original Pokemon villain, is a compelling character and a compelling storyline anyway. Um, yeah, but I, I've not watched all twenty-three Pokemon movies because. Um, because I don't hate myself that much. Uh, I don't think I could watch all 23. But uh, but in saying that, like I said, the I Choose You and the second one was The Power of Us. And then this is the third one since the little reboot. And they are they do look nice. They are nice looking films. And um, generally speaking, the music's okay. Uh it's like on the cheesy side, but I mean that's Pokemon, really, you know. Yeah, Pokemon Rap. Interestingly, rap's. the first, the f- oh, that's that's the that's the best. <laughs> but the the first Pokemon movie has, like, if I think about sort of uh moment like things in the nineties particularly that were sort of like impactful to to kids or teens or whatever, and I, I often look 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 back to things like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which was just like constantly full of, you know really interesting social commentary and like well-meaning um enthusiasm and and you know tales of uh frustration classism and racism yeah. just yeah. like for something that was aimed at like you know uh 11 12 and early teens and things like that that show was like pretty full-on yeah um but then the pokemon movie uh, Mewtwo has the fantastic line, and, and I will quote, is, I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. Like, that is Absolutely. a very, very deep and meaningful line <laughs> for a, a movie that uh, no child understands that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not yeah. even close. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's like uh, many times I've, I've uh, spoken about this is in Transformers, the movie, uh, like any any child who understands the full dialogue is like borderline genius because <laughs> there's there's lines. Uh, what is it? Uh, there's literally a line in that movie where uh, a character says, your bargaining posture is highly dubious. <laughs> it's like, what? Is that, uh, <laughs> is that Arson Wells? Is that a unicorn? It is, it's unicorn, yeah. <laughs> unicorn. Uh, the bargaining <laughs> posture is highly dubious. It's it's just such a okay. <laughs> I guess like I love that. My, my bargaining posture is highly dubious. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, it's incredible. God, so, good. so good. Um, but yeah, the uh, th- then we get to the the sort of I suppose as you say the second phase of that battle mm-hmm. where yeah. uh, this is where we've we've convinced the other Pokemon that they should come and fight, and they're all sort of. <clears throat> getting involved and Dada has now been taken back to the the waters with Coco uh, and yeah, tries not... trying to go... harness the power of the jungle to no. to heal him. 
no, he has like one more. He comes back with the Pokemon and jumps in, and he gets like the superpowers that he has. And he's he grows like big tentacle arms, like um that Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo. The arm of the spider robot. Yeah, as a what's that? What's that Nintendo game? The beat up where you had like the springy arms. 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 Really called arms. Oh yeah, yeah that's called arms. arms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, just continue now. How often? How often are you gonna have a the conversation? Yeah. Where you're like, you know that that game, the one with the thing, and then the person will be going, "Oh, it's it's that. That's the name of that game." <laughs> yeah. Just the thing you said is the name of it. Yeah. Yeah. That that will never happen again in your life. This is well, just this one conversation. Well, uh, we that uh, we sports game that you did all the sports in. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then all like, the simple names. Um, <laughs> anyway, he does the whole arms, whole thing with his, because uh, he has like big vines around his arms and starts punching all these them vines. Yeah, yeah. These magical vines. Yeah, and all glowy vines. And then he dies. And then Coco brings him back to life. Yeah. With, yeah, could... with the hit, somehow, somehow using a Pokemon move. Yeah, um, yeah, it manages to harness the power of the jungle, uh, as if he were indeed a Pokemon. I'm reading here, um, yeah, <laughs> from the official, just, just to source. add a, to add a, a big question mark over Coco's uh, origins. Um, I told you, man, he's yeah. Superman. <laughs> it's not the first time they've done something like this as well, they've all they've sort of hinted they've. Played with that in the past about you know a human adopting the ability that a Pokemon has in order to use it to help him and stuff. They're all they're very much into that at the moment in the in the games and all through the franchise. This idea that if the if the bond is strong enough, the the line between Pokemon and human is it, it can be blurred, which huh. I, I think is heading in a dangerous direction. But <laughs> I will I suppose we'll, I suppose we'll find out. Yeah, uh, does, does the dangerous direction involve the word furries? <laughs> too late for I'm that, not, guys. I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to yuck someone else's yum or anything here, but like that's the, the only thing, the, the direction I foresee. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you know, it's already gone. Gonna, there. The light between animal and human is like, no, no, we're not. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna put a stop to that right here. Yeah, um, oh, before yeah. it gets worse than that. Yeah, exactly. It's already, already happened. Sorry, I haven't, guys. I don't know what you. <laughs> no, you, you're right, Colin. It's it's too late. I've I have not manifested that. It already existed. It's already uh, existed. It's Twenty years. Yeah. Thirty years. Oh. Thirty years. Oh. So, um, Speaking now we get into the full on action sequence. What? No, twenty five years of Pokemon. Twenty six now. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty. Um. Twenty five. I think. February. Eighty five pocket monsters, right? February of February of this year was the twenty fifth Pokemon Day, so yeah. it was the twenty fifth anniversary. Yeah. Wow! Yeah, 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 well, crazy. The, uh, the original release in the UK is ninety eight. I think so. November ninety eight. I think so. The yeah. US was the year before, and Japan was obviously two years before that. So yeah, yeah. The fear I would be crazy. Yeah, crazy, crazy that. That's why it's, it's kind of missed me. Just being that bit older. Yeah, I get you're you're a couple of years older than I am, so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah see, I was probably literally about the late, the oldest you would be, and still. I think so because I was time. when it when it became when it became the thing that everyone was talking about in the UK. I I was the literal target market age. Uh, I think because I would be what ten. And you are you're a you are a ten year old going on this adventure in the games, and forevermore will be a ten year old in every Pokemon game. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the reason that I was uh, I was could we myself and you, Stephen and Michael as well, we were really really into it. And then, but yeah. I think the I think the mere fact that I was just that little bit younger than you is what has played a part in me being sucked in to the extent that I was, you know. Because I, I was way into it uh, until <clears throat> until Ruby and Sapphire. That was the last one I had the real affinity for. Yeah. Uh, uh, and 
was Diamond Silver the first one after that? Uh, not Diamond, sorry. Uh, Diamond, Diamond. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah, that was yeah, so Gen, Gen that 4, Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, yeah. I picked that up, but never really played through it. Then we got Black and White, Black and White 2, uh, X and Y. Yep. Yeah, yep. and then X Sword and, y, Sun and Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield. Sun and Moon, shit, God, I forgot about Sun and Moon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Crazy, man. Lots of games. Um, yeah, so that was a big fight. Brings this guy back to life. And then the humans kind of revolt against their leader and go, what the fuck? What's going on? We don't want to be part of this. <laughs> and the guy's like, well, tough. you are going to be part of it. <laughs> and then they went, well, you can't say no to my robot spider. Yeah. And then uh, it was one of the humans went, you know what? There's a control box. You just need to get to this spot in the back. And they get Pikachu to go ride on all the Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, oh. which is a very cool animated scene, actually. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's they try the the first attempt is to just uh, Ash tells Pikachu to use Quick Attack on the robotic spider, and that doesn't that fails because of course it would Ash. Come on, yeah. and uh, Pikachu, use your soft body. Yeah, to quickly hit this solid steel robot. It's all about Quick Attack. Oh, oh, Ash turns his cat backwards. You know he's serious when he does that. Yes, you know that he means business when he turns his cat backwards. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I can oh see the God. sun getting into your eyes more. Surely you would be yeah. serious with that. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm having to squint, I can totally get in on this Pokemon battle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the thing that gets me is, is like, so it's, a, it's a robot spider, right? What kind of Pokemon are you, Pikachu? Just, uh... Electric? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, use every move except the electric ones. Just yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be too easy, right? Like we don't wanna yeah. we don't wanna end the carnage now. I just need like a few more minutes where there's yeah. danger some other animals getting hurt. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> of course he uses Iron Tail of all moves to slice down the back of it and yeah. essentially blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. And that's disabled. And then the guy wanders off to hang out. Coco captures him, doesn't he? Coco yeah. captures. Coco's, Coco's Pro- anger Professor takes over. Zed. Yeah. 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 And, and then they restore restore the jungle. He was going to jump into the water yeah. for some reason. He was. It's like it's like you know, if I just kill myself by throwing myself into here, I feel like this is better. Yeah. What way? Yeah. Like how? How does that benefit you or anyone in, in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> you are yes. literally <laughs> talking about, like, hey, it's like, you know, get captured or jump off the cliff? I don't... Okay. Maybe pre- maybe prison in the Pokemon world is littered with human rights atrocities. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you don't see yeah. it. He got bungled off there, anyway. Officer, the o- Officer Jenny, the, a master of waterboarding. That's what they don't tell you. There's <laughs> <laughs> Joy, the old sodium pentothal. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll find out what really happened here. Just give us a few minutes. Chancy, bring in those needles. <laughs> yeah. This guy. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a deeply, deeply disturbing angle to the world of Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. They they sort of uh, bring back the jungle. They uh, the, there's a rude sort of like tear a bit of the Owen vines, vines away, scrumple them up, and go uh, and like yeah. release them as spores, I guess. Uh, yeah. Growing uh, growing abilities because they grow the trees mass mighty fast. Because uh, everyone starts like replanting trees and stuff, and then they like. Oh That's help! Right, because they they hint at that at the very start, don't they? Because of the speed that the little plant grows out of the ground. Remember when they're planting oh, for yeah. uh, planting for berries, is it or something like that? Yeah, I've, it sprouts up super I've, quickly. Uh, surprisingly, glossed over an entire character uh, in Squovit or whatever the squirrel's name is. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Surprisingly, uh, like the, really channeling the Swedish chef from the Muppets, very hard <laughs> throughout the whole whole movie. Oh, the, Screw the, 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, so oh, it's, it's not really. <laughs> it's, uh, it's mate, uh, Coco's mate, or Al's mate. Yeah, Al, Al's pal. Al's pal. Al's pal. Uh, why, haven't I, I, yeah, why haven't I leaped yet, Al? Yeah. Which makes me think of Quantum Leap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, they, uh, they heal up the jungle, and then Ash is like, well, you know, time to say bye. And then they yeah. kind of say bye. And Ash does the thing that I just find incredibly confusing is like, he's like, well, see ya! And then just sprints in the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this weird dramatic exit. It was like, goodbye! Ah! <laughs> Running at a million miles an hour. It's like, Ash, you one, don't know where you're going. Two, don't know how long you're going to have to run like that for. Three, why are you like this? <laughs> what? what is wrong with you? I. Uh, I... Has a few things wrong with him. But anyway, um, <laughs> and then Coco was basically was, uh, oh, I got, I want to go on my journey. And then the yep. dad was like, "No, you can't be doing that. Why can't you leave me?" Type thing. And then it's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's all I apply." I'm actually quite happy about it. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> yeah. Why? And then the. They block up the plant to cause a big master firework type display in the plant. In yeah, the, the, the uh, they block the hole, the pressure hole in the in the in the, the life tree swamp or river. <laughs> and it causes like a big sort of a geyser to appear at the top of the yeah. tree. Yeah, um, that I can tell you right now, nobody noticed. Not a single fucking person. Like nobody saw a giant water spout. Those guys in helicopters being like, definitely didn't see that. No, didn't yeah. see that. Uh, and then they all kind of does like the the crazy faraway scene. Oh, I was watching the uh, watching the trailer for Netflix series. It was like the cliches of uh, Hollywood. And then and the, the, in the trailer, it talks about uh, the cliche of the guy watching a funeral from a far away. And then it says, <laughs> and then they go. So uh, the Fast and the Furious is it, it trumped it even better because they have like, um, what's his name? The guy is dead in real life. It watching the funeral of, of the oh, friend. Oh. Well, they have Vin Diesel watching him watching this funeral. <laughs> From far away, <laughs> you far away. Like, <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> It's like how the Fast and Furious franchise trumps itself. It's like, it's like well, we're going to go to space, but also we're going to have a guy watching a funeral and a guy watching the guy watching the funeral. Yeah. Also, the guy who's watching the funeral is dead in real life. Yeah. So, well, I mean, this is also the first after the first film or the second film, whatever ones he was in. It's not the second one. Vin Diesel's not in the second Fast and Furious. Oh wow, really? And he's also only in one scene in the third one. Wow. I thought he was in all of them except from the last two because he fell out with The Rock. No, Vin Diesel, no, The Rock's not been in them. Oh, wait, well, I thought The Rock was in them. He was certainly in the He's last. He's only been in. Has he not only been in one or is it two? He's the been Rock's in been five, in. Five, six, and seven. I five, think. six, and seven, right. I think. And then they had a falling out during seven and he wasn't in eight or nine. Wait, I mean. They had to what did out. they fall out about? Just uh, the rock being the rock. I think the uh, the Vin Diesel, the Vin Diesel, <laughs> the Vin Diesel uh, has sort of uh, imposed upon the rock that there is no franchise without Vin Diesel. Um, right. And it's like, sure, that that might be true, but the Rock is the highest paid movie star in the world. Yes. And you're telling him that. Uh, yeah. So you were telling him that when he came on and the reviews and money for the franchise was pouring in. Yeah, exactly. So like not not saying that, you know, causation is correlation, whatever, uh or correlation equals causation, but yeah, it just uh maybe maybe he's been a bit of a dick. Yeah, sounds like it. Oh yeah. interesting. It's just weird. Um yeah, so they're saying goodbye to Coco as he runs away and he goes to Gash. And tries to say something to Ash because he's starting to learn a bit more English. Like, bye, Ash, and hi, Ash, and you going, Ash? Type thing. 
uh, and Ash goes, oh, you going to want to go on a journey too? And he goes, uh-huh. With, with you? I'm sure he says with you. And then Coco runs away on his own journey. <laughs> Because he's just <laughs> talking what Ash did. Bye. Yeah. Ah. I want to go on a journey with you. As fast as possible. Because as you know, like to in order to say goodbye to someone, normally you have to enter a full on sprint. Yeah. And look yeah. behind you waving like a lunatic. Yeah, yeah, because looking behind you while sprinting is also really easy to do and not at all dangerous. No. It can never lead to any danger. I, my son can attest to this. Yeah. He has never got himself into a single accident by not looking where he's running. Yeah. <laughs> I am uh, I am shocked. I have seen many accidents happen for that one reason. Oh. <laughs> um, and then that's kind of the end of this film. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Celebi appears and sees that everything's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so. like that's it. Oh, and Dada so takes, sort of... yeah, Dada so... t- takes off his scarf and uh, hangs it on the it's... boy's uh, bedroom treehouse thing, and you see Celebi there, and then that's it, really. Yep. It's just uh... Fucking Celebi is like, well, thanks for sorting that all out, guys. I'm moving back. I'm back now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, thanks for thanks for fixing that problem with the jungle. Probably could have helped out, but nah, not really my scene. <laughs> No, uh, he's, but he's only know, come back to get a no, future egg. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, now that this place is cool, I'm going to bring back more future eggs. <laughs> we're going to have, uh, I don't know, some future scramble or something. I don't know. Just yeah. uh, <laughs> super weird. Future egg. Uh, I mean, technically, isn't all eggs future? No, they don't have no they're them not. Like, I, I, well, no, like because if an egg exists now, it's uh-huh. still moving along the same timeline. They're not breaking part like the laws of the physics. Yeah. Well, because it doesn't it doesn't exist now, right? And then when yeah, it does exist, like it exists. Potential energy. Potential energy is not time traveling energy. It's just energy that is not expended. <laughs> but it's future egg. It's like it's the, future egg until the, the battery. Present. <laughs> your double A batteries. It's like oh, you know, they're full. <laughs> they're full of future power. No, they're not. It's just power. <laughs> future... no, they're, they're stored. No, no, no. Your car's not full of future future petrol. It's just petrol. It's future <laughs> petrol, man. Don't don't burst my bubble. Don't burst my bubble. I like I like my future petrol. I'm in future petrol mode. Hey, tell me, is it is it is it any is it any less expensive to buy fuel in the future? Because right now it's not good. <laughs> No, because also they got the imported from the future into my car. Well, Cost... shit, imagine the tax on that. <laughs> yeah, imagine the tax on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Anyway, so it's that time, time of the, the podcast. I think we already made our views clear. Damn it, but... Yeah. We're all coming at this from slightly different places, though, which is which I think is quite interesting. Because I wanted to just ask you, Colin, like mm-hmm. what you hadn't watched a Pokemon film since the first one? No, no. Since the, no, you've never watched any. It's just Detective Pikachu. You've never watched any apart from Detective Pikachu, which yeah. we've already established doesn't count. It's not in the same category. So yeah, uh, that's interesting. So you have no frame of reference really for I... for this. So what like what did you think? Uh. Well, I just found it's very, it was a pretty shallow movie in a sense, but then I remember some of the earlier Pokemon episodes and they're quite shallow in themselves. It wasn't a, a deep, they could have made things so much deeper and the way yeah. children's cartoons are at the moment, there's a lot of children's cartoons out there that actually have like a decent plot and storyline in them. Exactly, because that's that's the thing that comes up a lot is that, you know, people say it about the games as well when it comes to Pokemon, like, you know, you've got to remember that these games are made for 10, 11, 12 year old kids. And it's like, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that I, that older people cannot enjoy something that is objectively, you know, well made and Mm -hmm. good and enjoyable and stuff like that. So I still enjoy consuming the Pokemon games. And it's like the films 
no, they're not aimed at a 33-year-old or a 40-year-old or a 50-year-old or whatever. Mm -hmm. But neither are Disney movies. And yet but... Disney movies have enough about them for them to be objectively enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, You're right. It comes down to the depth, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of movies. Like but I, I feel even the early Pokemon episodes that were less shallow than that movie. Like, I feel like there's there's more character building and nuance to uh, oh, season one Indigo Indigo League, uh, Indigo League Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. Than this movie. Definitely. Yeah. Like, oh, actually, you're, like, you're... I think particularly, but like introduction to Charmander as a character, like as, yeah. as Ash's Charmander, is the downtrodden, beaten up Pokemon that the kid doesn't want and leaves out to die in the rain. Yeah, with like genuine emotional moments, you know? Actually, yeah. That was, that was good stuff. The original series does have a lot. A lot more in it than now you're saying. It's certainly because they don't have the luxury of going. So you know what this 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 has been around for twenty five years, and this is what Ash is, and everyone kind of knows what Ash is. It's like Mario. Everyone knows Mario. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Chris Pratt. Yeah, Chris Pratt. Mario. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Char Mario. Charles Day, Luigi. Yeah, that's, that's I totally believe that. That's the that's the one I, uh, I was like, what Charles Day is Luigi over Chris Pratt as Mario. It didn't really shock me that Chris Pratt was Mario as much as Charles Day. I think I think that the Luigi casting is the probably the most inspired. Yeah, so if you're... not. Uh... What's his name? Uh, Keegan Michael Key as Toad is also inspired casting. Yes. Oh God. What was I? I was watching the movie. That's the that's the guy from uh, Keegan and Kel, yeah. Keen Peel. Keen Peel. Oh, he's uh, that guy. Who's who's the guy from the uh, Keen and Kel? Then what's his name? Keen. Keenan. Keenan Thompson. Uh, Keenan, Keenan Thompson. Yeah. Keen Thompson. Yeah. Because I think I saw him in another movie. It was like Michael Caine. Uh, and it's about him really old and getting upset with the bank. and gets, uh, He goes to the bank and says, I can't pay my mortgage because you've gone increasingly in interest rate. Oh, we warned you about this. No, you said it, it would not really happen. And then a bank oh. robbery happens. And then he gets inspired to rob a bank. And then they try to rob like a, a local convenience store. Like do some shoplifting out of that. Uh, and they do a big runaway and totally get caught because they're like, it all gets uh, blown out and steal like a, like a motor scooter thing, you know, like the old people scooter things. Or well, getting chased by like a scooter <laughs> yeah, guard. Mobility scooter. <laughs> yeah, the mobility scooter. It's a movie with, did you say Michael, Michael Caine? Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman. And, um. Keenan wow. Thompson. Yeah, King Tom Thompson, but he he still only appears as like uh, the manager of the store, and you know he just kills it with his lines in it. I I thought it was probably the funniest character in it because they try to lose the security guard by throwing flour in the the face of the security guard so they don't so she can see where she was running, and said, "Look at her! You made her look like a, a Colombian mule." Stop. <laughs> 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 Desperate to pay the bills and come through for their loved ones, three lifelong pals risk it all by embarking on a dare, daring bid to knock off the very bank that absconded with their money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they also... Um, going in style. Yeah, going in style. It's actually pretty good. Weirdly, weirdly, it's directed by Zach Braff. Oh, wow. Really? Is Zach Braff. And scrubs. All right. Yeah, makes sense. Anyway, yeah, it's... Wow. So, talking about Pokemon. Yeah, back to the Pokemon. <laughs> so, uh, you, you did not like this film. Would you recommend it, Colin? Uh, maybe it's kids' movie. You, if you want to like get some kids off your back for like uh, I don't know, thirty minutes. Notice how that's not even... three times, Colin. Three damn times. <laughs> You watched it three times, and and you know what? It won't be like that's not including all the 
in quotes, false starts of watching the first 20 minutes. <laughs> and then when I switch it back on, it's like, can you put it back to the start? And it's like, please no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's, that's, that's kids for you, man. Like you say, it's you can put it on for 30 minutes and distract them for 30 minutes. And then they'll be want to It's like else. I said, the song at the very beginning is the most enjoyable part of the movie. Yeah. That's why that's, you know. And then yeah. you got the song at the end of well to close it off. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, we are, we are jungle, we are life or something. I think they say. I don't know if I could, I, I am really quick to recommend Pokemon stuff to anyone who asks me, you know, about the games or anything like that. I think the cards are really cool and sort of collect them in a sort of really relaxed basis. But if someone wanted to watch a Pokemon movie, you know, or the anime or, or something like that, I don't think I could ever recommend. I, I don't think I could recommend any of the movies. I think that's the, the truth of it. I would always say absolutely watch Detective Pikachu because it's great. It's a lot of fun and mm. it's been really well made and it looks it looks amazing. But I don't know. I don't think I could recommend this. I agree. I think there's much better Pokemon stuff to consume. Yeah. And a lot of it on Netflix as well. Again, is it see yeah. if this was like a see if this was like a fifty minute a fifty minute thing, you know? But an hour and forty minutes, it just it doesn't have the content before it. That's no you know. Too too shallow for that length of time. You could totally yeah. have done away with, you know, at least five minutes of each montage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was uh I like to say it. Recommend it. I see it's just to small kids. Anyone yeah, I mean, if, if there's a kid, if there's a if there's a kid, eight, nine, ten, or or younger or whatever, who really loves Pokemon, they're going to want to see the latest Pokemon film, aren't they? Um, okay. Yeah, my kids love it, yeah. but you know, yeah. it's, it's it is that it's just looking at the Pokemon and being interested in seeing them in places they haven't seen them before. That's exactly exactly like the the sand dragon in the forest. Yeah, because he's you know <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh the, the jungle asshole. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I uh, think if our episodes had subtitles, it would be jungle asshole. For yeah. this. Um, the arsehole formerly yeah. known as desert spirit. Yeah. <laughs> What's the symbol for that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we um, uh, we have persevered and, and seen through the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that kind of brings us to a natural outro. I think uh, we'll, we'll we'll change things up and we'll have our guest. Do you have anything you want to plug? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Um, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not fine. really. No. I uh, just wanted to ask. I would always just encourage people. I'm I'm uh, I'm a I'm a corporate shell. I want people to enjoy Pokemon and everything that is fed to them with the Pokemon name on it. But it doesn't have to be this film. But there's lots of other good stuff out there. Um, That's right. I guess that, that would be a good question. If you could first two seasons of the anime. Yeah. If yeah. The, first two. Like I would reckon the if it's if we're talking outside of the games, the 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 first two seasons of the anime. Detective Pikachu and the very first Pokemon movie. That's where I would go personally for that Fear. lovely Fear. late late nineties goodness. Hmm. Good shit. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, you've been listening to Who's That Anime? As you've been listening to, of course, you'll know this is a podcast at this point. Um, we can be found where all good podcasts can be found. Uh, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Castbox, Overcast, all those fantastic things, including Spotify, or you can find us at anchor.fm forward slash who's the anime. We also have a Facebook page where you can come and hang out, or, well, more likely, come and see when new episodes are coming, or share in some memes uh, that we occasionally share. Um, the uh, Mr. Popo meme that I shared uh, more recently gave me a good chuckle. So uh, it's a, 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 a nice clip from the DBZ abridged, which I would also recommend people go to watch. It's very funny. Um, it's still there. We generally put up. 
That must be, surely, no? There's a reason they thought it. I think they keep getting copyright fucking infringed. Ah. And it was a pain in the ass to keep getting oh. them like, no, there's no copyright infringement in this. Oh, man, I'll need to need to try and download it from somewhere then if yeah. I can't find it on YouTube. But yeah, would would recommend. Um, so yeah, if you want, you can be find you can find us at facebook.com forward slash who's that anime. Like I say, you can see when new episodes are coming, share and enjoy the memes, come and join the conversation. Um, Colin likes to play video games. I do. Um, does so at www.twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel. Um, what's the latest you've been playing? Uh, Sable. That's the name of the game. That shell shading game. I haven't played anything other than that. That was a few weeks ago. Wow. Well, yeah. It's been a holiday. <clears throat> it seems. Yeah, that's true. Um, but of course, if you want to catch up with any of the archives of any of the video, uh, any of the things he's played, or a group of us have played, uh, you can do so at YouTube by looking up for the channel Couch Fuel. Similarly, if you like um, horror related content, then you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Hail Payman. Um, similarly, I have an archive of the stuff that I've done on YouTube under the same channel name. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a YouTube channel um, where we have put up our Golden Boy season so far, mm-hmm. um, working on getting the rest of it up and done, but just not not as much time has been spent on that. But I, <laughs> I promise we will one day catch up on that. Yeah, um, we'll get there. Uh, it's also like to mention that we're all on uh, the Couchfield uh, YouTube channel. That, yes. That's very true. Yes. We did, we did Mario that's Party. We think, are 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Which, there, there's a thought, right? You I said, feel I feel I feel physical pain when I think about that. You know that. <laughs> Even more for physical pain. Um in it, it's been two and a half uh, three and a half years since we did that. Three and a half. Three and a half? Wow. Really? really? Oh no, see that's interesting because in my head it feels like that was further back than that. I think it was four. Pretty sure it was twenty eighteen. Is it four and a half? I thought no. it was twenty seventeen. Please tell me it's not. Uh, could find out. Maybe just go to the no, YouTube channel. Please. It couldn't have Let's been twenty eighteen. Five years. Yeah. It couldn't have been twenty eighteen because I was in Canada. I thought it was four and a half years. Oh my! In God. which case, it's nearly five years. Yeah. See, that feels that feels more. Oh. Yeah. We should do a five year anniversary and uh, do something for that. Another forty hours I would, of pain. I I would I would definitely do something like that again, but I I think straight off the bat I would say I absolutely can't do forty eight hours. It's That's not right. something I'm physically capable of anymore. I think I could do twenty four though. I, I think I could do twenty four. I'm not sure I could do forty eight hours. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So I was thinking, since you said you haven't watched all the Pokemon movies. Oh god. All, all 23. Oh my god. That, that'd least, be about... At least 36 hours. Well, uh, how many are two hours? <laughs> oh my god. No, this is <laughs> one of the... <laughs> so, the Secrets of the Jungle is one of the longer Pokemon films. So they do tend to come in at about an hour 25, an hour 30. This came in at about an hour 40, I believe. One hour 43, yeah. 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 So, so, um, yeah, that would be that would require a lot of charitable donations for me to be even remotely be, tempted. It would certainly yeah. be less than forty hours, but also time I will not get back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. uh, on that note, uh, thank you very much to to Robbie for joining us. To uh, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. In, in the Pokemon, the movie Secrets of the Jungle. Um, don't know when this ep- the, you, you'll be listening to this episode at the time we put it up. Not exactly sure when I'm going to put it up, but it will be up. So <laughs> if you're listening to it, enjoy. Um, but uh, we'll be back. I don't know exactly where in the timeline I'm going to put this, so it's very difficult to give contextual information. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll Let's be just back. keep this one evergreen. Evergreen. Oh, Sonic X. No. No? No. No, cut. Cut. (laughs) (laughs)
we're wow. we're done here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we will see you next time. Yeah, uh, folks. On uh, this is who's that anime? See you there. This is this. I thought you were going to say this is anime. This, this is anime. This is anime. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Just your camera is just going to fall to one side. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right. Bye, folks. Bye. <laughs> okay. Stop recording. Thank you.